It's a Friday, which means it's time for a golden goal. Mr. Martino Puccio joining the show, breaking down the best bets for this weekend in soccer. We're hitting Germany today. We're hitting Italy. And, well, England's deciding to go with the FA Cup again. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna turn things over and go to France. Martino, appreciate you, you hopping on, as always. Yeah, of course. Um, just love it. Right in the thick of things. Champions League is right around the corner as well. So, so things are really starting to heat up now. Yeah, I don't know. I think there is a significant date um, on February 14th, but I I just know that's when Champions League comes back. Um, it's, that's all I'm going to say on that. I don't want to get in trouble. No. <laughs> um, we, we had a pretty good weekend last weekend, though. Just, just taking a look at what we hit last weekend. Uh, you know, the Chelsea-Liverpool game said it might just be a dud, and it kind of ended up being. So we'll take, we'll take the Chelsea or tie there. Uh, we did really well on the Arsenal game as well uh, i got a little greedy on dortmund because I, I think i ended up taking a minus two but you hit the money line uh over two and a half and both teams to score was kind of a, a combo that, that you would hit for plus 223 so that's that's pretty solid overall pretty good week though yeah definitely bundesliga drama i mean there was like three goals in like seven minutes in that match and yeah. then again and then again it happened midweek and then i was just like you know what well, just like again for the for this episode. So Screw it. Just just very happy to get back into it. Like I was saying last week, it's the most fascinating league uh, in yeah. terms of betting uh, to watch. And hey, here on here on Golden Goal, we like easy transitions. So let's just go right into our only Bundesliga game that we have for this weekend. Very thank you for really just setting me up right on a platter there, Martino. I really really appreciate it. I, uh, I can't we, dunk, you know, so you know I got to give up the alley oops. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm six three and I can't dunk either, so it's you know it's fine. I can be a little more embarrassed about that. Um, <laughs> we got Bayern Munich playing their first league game uh, of the year, coming back. They're taking on Frankfurt, a game of two teams near the top of the table. This is a Bayern team that does not have a lot of breathing room at the top of the table. It's Saturday, twelve thirty p.m. We talked about it. Bundesliga usually going to see a lot of goals. Tell me which way you're leaning here. Um, yeah, Bayern drawing their two most recent matches is pretty bizarre. And and that's something yeah. like you kind of have to think of in terms of trends. Like, is Bayern really going to draw a third match in a row? And for me, that's just not something I'm going to be looking at. They faced earlier this year it was a six to one beat down. It was the opening match of the season. So again, we can't really take too much into account there. But that was on the road. Now Bayern is back home in this one. Again, you mentioned it. It's very close at the top of the table. Bayern is going to come out hot here. This is where I love Bayern first half money line. It's only at mm -hmm. minus 150. I think that's something that I, I've really loved. So again, they want to set the tempo early. I think they're going to come out the gates hot. Again, you could you could look at some intervals where they score in the first 15 minutes, the first 30 mm -hmm. minutes, or in that time span. That's always plus money type of bets that you could look at. Uh, that's something I kind of stay away from. But again, Again, just options for people. And then Bayern first half and then over two and a half in totals at plus 115. And then if you want to push it a little bit further, because it is Bundesliga, over three and a half can go over to uh, plus 190. So that's something I really like looking at, especially if you don't want to look at Bayern full-time uh, money line. That's not really the greatest yeah. of odds. Maybe in a, a bigger parlay, that's something you want to toss them back into. But again, mm -hmm. the pressure's on for them. We haven't seen Bayern have like this close of a lead and... Obviously, it plays into account that Robert Lewandowski isn't there anymore. So there's some mm -hmm. vulnerability there. So for me, um, I think Bayern has to come out hot here. But make no mistake, Frankfurt's an awesome team. Both teams to score yeah. is obviously something you could look at as well. I, I don't think you could ever really go wrong in that sense. Guy, you were on fire. You're just giving me alley-oops left and right here. I love it. Um, <laughs> I, I, really, I really like both teams to score here. Man. I think just... There's something to be said about Bayern coming out and it's their first match uh, of the year and wanting to get off to a hot start, but you also have to take into account rust in certain in certain uh, aspects of that. And just the fact that this is a big match that I'm sure they're going to get up for, um, but just the, the level of quality that you're playing against in Frankfurt, I think there's plenty of opportunity for both teams to score here. I am I'm I'm not as cheeky as you are. I, I'm not ready to take, you know, like a time interval of when Byron's gonna score, but I do like Byron to score first. You can get that at minus three hundred, which look, if you're just taking that by itself, there's really not much value there. But if you're throwing that in a parlay, not that I'm saying to do it, but I'm also not telling you not to. Um I 
I do like Byron to score first um, at minus 300. You mentioned both teams to score. I like that as well, the over two and a half. If I'm going to kind of go against the grain of what we're saying here, I am a fan of double chances. Um, I think Frankfurt has the ability to at least get a draw here. I mean, if you want to go Byron and draw, it's like minus a thousand. Like you, you, there's no point. No, there's no you want to go Frankfurt and draw. If you think there is remotely an opportunity for that to happen, or you want to bank on the draw and you're not, you know, fully into it, you want to just kind of take off a little bit of value. You can get it at plus 245. But at that point, if you want to just take the draw in general, I don't really blame you. But that's that's not a terrible number to be looking at. Yeah, no. I mean, again, it's just all what you pair it with. And Frankfurt's mm-hmm. been playing very well. Again, respectable side. They've won the Europa League. That's It's a very respectable competition to win. And they haven't really regressed this season, which has been impressive. Again, I think you got to toss out the 6-1 to one out the window. Um, a lot of people are probably going to be hesitant on that. But again, that's all the way back in August. And what we've seen from Bayern as of late isn't the typical dominance that we've seen for 10 straight yeah. years. Uh, so they're vulnerable, and and I totally see where you're coming from with that. Just for me, it's just, I don't know, just three straight draws for Bayern is just mind-boggling to me, and that's just the yeah. only reason why. Um, other than that, though, I think both teams to score just just feels very safe. And look, I'm not going to say that the Europa League isn't a respectable tournament, but you sound like you root for a team who may find themselves in the Europa League. Am I on to something here? It's not that it's not a respectable tournament. Um, I just just think it's just not that typical (laughs) Bundesliga side that's going to lay down. I know, again, the 6-1, but I I just don't don't see that. They they know what's at stake. It's that high-intensity type of match. You're on the road. Bayern is vulnerable to an extent. Um, I, mm-hmm. I just think you could see something there, and I, I see why you go with the Frankfurt draw for 245. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's move over to France here. We don't usually hit this side because it, in theory, should just be PSG's, you know, just season every single season. You had a really good video um, on, your, on your Instagram or your TikTok, I think it was, that you were like, I, you know, I, I watch soccer. I watch every game that's ever played across any country. I still do not understand why PSG just does not win 6 nothing every single game. I got to say, Martino, um, that is some hard-hitting analysis, and I agree 100%. Like, it just doesn't – I mean, I mean, I mean, the just financial disparity is just – it's just yeah. stupid. <laughs> like, the amount of talent that you have, I'm not saying, like, every single match should be like that, but, like, mm-hmm. it's only a three-point lead. At least Bayern lost Lewandowski. Messi at least yeah. rebounded this season. Like you added even more players and depth, and PSG and PSG sitting here, and it's not a nine point lead. You're losing or drawing matches to sides that you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. And Rams is is a good side here. Um, yeah. and again, they're they're fifth. The disparity between them and PSG is nothing insane. It just feels like mm-hmm. so individualistic with this PSG side. Um. And again, that, that'll play into a part when we talk Champions League in a couple of weeks. But I just don't feel safe with anything besides killing Mbappe or both teams to score. And uh, again, both teams to score with this one just really feels like the safest type of bet. Their defense is really just abysmal for a side like that. They've been linked to Milan Skriniar, who is Inter's top defender. I think we'll see him come in the summer because I don't think they're going to pay as much, even though I do think they should, uh, considering what we see here with, with their flaws. Both teams to score, yes. I know you love Mbappe with this one. Again, yeah. he, he he is almost at even money. It's still pretty decent odds if you parlay it with something. But again, if you want to go with P, uh, Mbappe, he scored five to six goals midweek in, in the cup match uh, for them. Mm-hmm. I don't even know the team that they played. I, I can't even I can't even tell you if it's in FIFA or anything like that. But again, Mbappe to get a brace, I mean, it's even worth looking at a hat trick. Uh, just any any combination of Messi being involved, any time goal or assist, just all that type of stuff that you could put into a parlay here. And then again, totals. But for me, I don't see the point in, in the value in betting PSG money line anymore. Not anytime soon, at least. Like it has to be like a bottom half of the table type of team. This is a respectable league inside. And I just don't see PSG just dominating the way we're supposed to expect them to. So yeah. Yeah. I mean you would 
you would expect that I really was looking at this. Uh, Rams hasn't lost in 13 matches unbeaten. And again, important note there uh, when you hear unbeaten in soccer, that means they, they have either won or tied. So it's not that they have won 13 yeah. straight matches. They just have not lost in 13 straight matches, which is still impressive. I think I saw it's like their, their longest streak since like 2014 or 15. Um, I'm seeing a lot of PSG like two nothing score lines. I'm just like score predictions. I, I like making my bets and then just kind of seeing what everyone else is thinking to see if I'm just the only one that's thinking it. If I've completely <laughs> missed something, um, so I, I checked just in case. I mean PSG to win to nil. I saw th- the best number you can get is plus one ten. I just like you mentioned. I, I just it's weird. I don't trust them enough to win to nil here. It just plus 110 i mean you can get both teams to score the consensus number is kind of just minus 112 but of course if you use our odds checker grid you can see that on bet rivers you can get that plus 102 so if i'm going to take one of those with minimal difference i'd rather just take both teams to score honestly yeah i mean i mean at that point too right and then you even mentioned like if you try and look at over two and a half it's just lurking around like the minus 200 so it's like okay like if if we don't trust psg to win three nothing because that's essentially what you're saying if you if you think they would win to nil it's just like all right two to one um and then i mean maybe you push a little bit further i know you like it in a parlay it's just Mm -hmm. it's just not a trustworthy side and sometimes you see historically like what Juve was the past decade, what Bayern was the past decade in their league, teams fear them. Nobody fears PSG like that. And that really says something uh, to me because, again, we've seen Monaco, we've seen Lille win the league, we see it tighter mm-hmm. again this year. And we're talking about arguably the most talented attack ever assembled. And that's not even an exaggeration. We're talking about Messi, and Mbappe, and Neymar, <laughs> and... And again, when it comes to totals like that, I, I just think you mm-hmm. just have to look at all those types of combinations. Just right now, PSG is not reliable in the sense of uh, not conceding goals. And, and I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I, again, I, I'd rather just take, um, you know, if you want to take the money line in combination of things, I, I can't stop you, but I'd rather just take both teams to score here because there has just been just some kind of suspicious trends on that PSG side. Let's go over to Italy now, Italy now our third game that we're going to look at. And of course we have our in-house Milan expert, um, mm-hmm. but we're looking at Roma Napoli here. This is Sunday at 2.45. Uh, these are two really good teams. Napoli burnt us like to a crisp the last time we had them on the show. Um, so let's, let's yeah. get a little redemption here. Uh, tell me what you're looking at and what should be a really good match between the two. Yeah, so again, this is just Napoli money line. Roma really struggle again on the road versus top sides. This is one of those instances. Juve's point reduction is massive. Uh, minus fifteen. Um, Why don't Milan... you want to tell people a little bit about that? Honestly, now that we're now that we're oh, talking. okay. So, well, there, there, there's a there's a lot <laughs> to unpack with this. So, there's multiple cases against Juventus. Um, uh-huh. and the 15 point deduction is coming from a plus Valenza case. Plus Valenza is basically a term for just profit, uh, from player mm-hmm. sales. Um, they've been accused and prosecuted for inflating player prices. You know, like say a mediocre player gets sold to a terrible side like Genoa, who's now in Serie B, not a good side. And they're having their record breaking transfer sales for a mediocre to terrible player that Juventus sold. Juve is benefiting from that. That's what's coming into this. The prosecutors initially asked for a nine-point deduction, and and then the court was saying, we're giving you minus 15. And an important part to say here is, as well, bookies have stopped potential Juventus relegation bets because there's more cases impending. And one of those cases is uh, a salary maneuvering. So when COVID hit, COVID was coming down financially hard on everybody. And Juve, being a publicly traded company, obviously has has more impact in terms of what they say publicly in statements or deferring mm. player salaries where players were taking a wage cut and they would try and pay them back over time. We've seen other clubs struggle with this. Essentially what happened, um, from what we know, is that at the time, a few years ago when COVID happened, Juve publicly stated that, hey, we are going to be taking wage cuts for players and they won't be getting their full salaries that they agreed to. Um, but under the table in WhatsApp chats, what happened was Juve were telling the players that we're still going to pay you fully, despite what we're saying publicly. 
That is called financial fraud. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, stock, mar stock market manipulation. This isn't just what has to do with the league. This is, these are financial crimes. Um, this is why their entire board resigned at the end of the day. Cristiano Ronaldo is involved in this. He's going to have to come back to Italy in March to go and discuss this. Mm -hmm. It's already been said that Paulo Dybala has talked to prosecutors and said, yes, th during the WhatsApp chat, Chiellini was telling the players, just sign this agreement. We will stay, still pay you in full. And, and you know what? Juve benefits from that because if their stock market is not taking as big of a hit as we would have thought, then that means they could reinvest more. If they're able to reinvest more, that means their team benefits from that and they're able to be on the pitch with better quality as opposed to teams like Inter or Milan or Roma or Napoli where they have to sell off players just to survive and not go bankrupt. And that's mm -hmm. where Juve was benefiting from this. And again, they haven't gotten a points deduction from that yet. It's harder to prove subjectivity on the value of a player, which is why they're trying to fight the plus Valenza point deduction. But make no mistake here. We, not, we might not see Juve be in European competition for a couple of years because UEFA yeah. is going to hunt them down for this because it, it's a breach of financial fair play. We'll see what happens in the Court of Appeals because we've seen Manchester City and PSG ha have some issues with this. this but again, Italian clubs don't have great luck with this. And Juve might be really screwed here. I think you're going to see player sales over the summer. You already see Weston McKenney probably on his way out, going to Leeds, joining the other Americans. Juve are in deep, you know what, and it's not looking good for them. And then again, this affects future markets, top four stuff. What is Roma into? Their top four mm -hmm. markets are shut down across the board because of this. So it's really mm -hmm. fascinating to see. All I'm saying is, don't bank on Juve anytime soon to win anything because there the rumor is another 20 point deduction incoming. So yeah, we'll see what happens. That's minus 35 for Juve. I don't even think they had 35 points on the season to begin with. So that'll explain everything for you there. So yeah, as far as as far as things go for Napoli Roma at this point. Napoli also might be at risk. The prosecutors want to come in and, and investigate their deal for Victor Oshiman, who's been the top scorer in the league so far. There were rumors of when they purchased him, it was $70 million, and now it's all, all the way fluctuated. They were trying to sell some youth team players that had inflated prices, so that kind of goes along the lines of what happened with Juve. The rumor is it might be nine-point deduction, but the way other teams have been struggling, I'm just saying on the outside looking in, there's half a season to play. If Napoli get a nine-point deduction here, that closes the gap with that. Maybe something happens. There's a player injury, and then all of a sudden those Serie A future markets open back up. But mm -hmm. we would have to wait for that. But at this moment in time, Napoli are clearly the best team in this league. They get Cavaraschelia back this weekend, who's – been the best player in the league and they were winning games without him recently as we said roma not looking great and over two and a half is almost even money in most books for me the way napoli has been playing this season i think that's something i really like with them they're creating so many chances they're finishing their chances over the weekend they probably should have had four goals they had one offside one terrible finish and that was without their best player so for me roma is vulnerable at times they're a good defensive mm -hmm. side Nicolo Zaniolo is probably on his way out and not playing, so that's one less player for them. Dybala, Tammy Abraham looking great. But again, I just really like Napoli with this, and they're going to continue this dominance. They get three points here. I mean, it's a wrap match day 20, and that's crazy to say. First time in 33 oh, years. In theory. For the in, in in th theory. It would be the greatest collapse of all time that you, yeah. that you would ever see in Serie A history. Three-point era, two-point era, doesn't matter. This would be the most epic collapse you'd ever see. I'm just not thinking that's going to happen, even though I am a Mets fan, right? I yeah. lived through 2007, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, we've, we've all been there. I, I lived through this year, you know, even. Um, yeah, I, yeah, not, to, not to be boring, but it's Napoli money line, and it's over two and a half for me. Um, I, again, like if if you wanna if you wanna bank on you know Napoli winning comfortably and you wanna you know take Napoli minus one and a half on the spread, um, I, I could give you a little extra juice there. Um, but I, I think this is one I don't look into too much. I'm not taking the under two and a half because Napoli burnt me one time. And then we saw six total goals, even though we had the two best defenses. Um, no, I'm not still bitter about that. But I'm I'm rocking with Napoli money line and, and over two and a half.
in this one. I'm I'm telling you uh, again. Sorry if it's boring, but that's that, that's the play to go for here. Hey, Napoli at home. Just consistency. Trust the process. Trust the trends. I mean, listen. If you get burned like we did, whatever. Like it was it was five one. It was the most epic win in in, in the past twenty years for them. Yeah, or almost thirty. So again. If you lose, let it be something that's a complete outlier in terms of trends in yeah. history. So again, yeah, I mean, this is just all Napoli. If you're if you're not really betting on them, again, Victor Oshman, uh, Zielinski. Maybe if there's a penalty involved in here, Roma, Roma are really just a side that is they're capable of making mistakes and stupid penalized mm-hmm. fouls. You could see something like that. Napoli is just so good. They're so much better than everything else. And again, if you want to look at Asian handicap markets, there's some value there. Uh, so again, this is just all Napoli. I, I can't see it go- going any other way. If anything, if Roma were to get anything from this, just a draw. There's there's no way I see them winning on the road here. Mm-hmm. It would be incredible for them. But also look at top four markets when they open back up. I think Roma is primed out of all the teams outside looking in uh, to finish in the top four. If you're curious, best number for both teams to score is minus 105. Don't think I'm pulling the trigger, but it's there if you want it. He's Martino Puccio from the State of the Play pod, also on the Athletic Football Betting. I'm Matias Wellman. Martino, I will talk to you same time, same place next week. Let's win some bets this weekend, why don't we?